Hello and welcome to Your Property Empire. I'm Chris Gray. On tonight's show, we are joined by Charles Tarby from Century 21 and Jane Wilkinson, also from Century 21. Welcome to the show, both Hi, of you. Chris. Now, we're going to start off, obviously, big news of the week is the RBA kept things on hold, which is probably not major news. But I guess the whole thing is, is there's so many of the papers saying on one hand, right, the market's going really hot, and then on the other hand, they're saying, well, it's overheated and things are going to change. What are both of your thoughts? It was a bit scary when the newspapers start reporting people getting reserves uh, 200,000 over because that does spook people. And the last people you want to be spooked is the Reserve Bank uh, for all the wrong reasons. But the stat that came out this week, I think it was two economists think the rate's going to uh, drop. Eight think it's uh, going to go up and ten think it's going to stay the same. So it's anybody's guess right now. I know we were, Jane and I were talking about interest rates, how it would impact on you yeah. and your partner if they went up. Definitely, yeah. I mean, obviously if the interest rates rise, then we have to look at making some sort of adjustment. So, you know, holding back on some certain things, whether it's making a trip or... So it's you might just have to stop going out so much. Exactly. Might have to stop it's going all these out. young people going out all <laughs> yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, right. Slow down with those nice dinners and <laughs> things like that. But that's what we say with the affordability in the good suburbs is, is for the, the young people these days is if they go out six nights rather than seven, they can save the extra money for exactly. the mortgage or the rent. Oh, there you are. That's <laughs> it. So plenty of affordability around in certain areas. But again, I guess the thing is with the media is people do believe it, don't they? Mm. They see something in the paper and they mm. think it's gospel just because it's written in the paper. And then it's confusing because they're getting opposite things. But I, I also feel the same. You, you think, oh, wow, what's going on? But I've got the numbers uh, each week and, you know, we compile them. Jane works on putting those numbers together with me. And they are still saying that everything is steady across the board and in most capital cities. So realistically, it's only pockets. Uh, that are experiencing these massive swings and that's what we have to be aware of and stay aware of yeah. all the time. Exactly. So the bottom line is, is you need to know what exactly your property is worth when you're going to buy it and if you don't pay too much and you've got plenty of buffer, things should be right in the long term. Anyway, now it's time for Purchase or Pass. Now they often say that medium priced residential properties around our capital cities tend to double every seven to ten years. But is that true and has that been the case over the last few years when the market's typically been flat until recently? So this week we've got a two bed, one bath unit with security car space, 7.8 kilometres from the CBD and 700 me 750 metres to the local action. It's in a block of 16. The property faces due north and so it's very sunny and looks out over the district. The property sold in November 2009 for 520,000 and then just recently for 780,000. This is a 260 grand capital gain in four and a half years, which is an increase of exactly 50%. So Charles, a very simple question for you is, do all properties in all areas grow at the same rate? Well, obviously not. You've seen the crazy side now. This, the lower end is always steady. It's always steady. The top end is very volatile and it's always subject to uh, how the economy is going in many respects. So I, I would say that that's a very good gain, unless, of course, uh, the people who sold it sold it a little bit less than they might have because they, they might have been buying something else at a better price somewhere else. You don't know. And that's a very good reason. You've got to read into stats. You can't just take one stat and one example from the paper and say, oh, that's how the whole market's gone. It depends on the price points, the areas. And so I guess the second question is what factors go into that growth? Now, obviously, it depends what the price you buy and the person that sold for. Yeah, and, and also where it is and, and what the stock levels are like in that area, which is what we're seeing right now. Uh, I was thinking about this question earlier when I saw it, I, and I, I thought about uh, properties that, that uh, my daughter bought, and she bought 10 years ago. We did a rental inspection yesterday on it. She bought 10 years ago at the top of the market, and she paid 380 And today, the property would, could possibly sell for 580 Now, that's not doubling, but uh, it is a, a good, strong move. Uh, I think it, it does depend on where you buy and what the stock levels are like and in her area the stock levels are low now so she could get a premium because of that. Yeah. Now Jane you're on the branding and marketing side of uh, Century 21 I guess from your perspective a lot of it's going to come down to how well it's been marketed on both selling occasions as well so what are the things that maybe you like about the way that adverts run and maybe the things you don't like? Sure. Well, you know I like the suburb, so um, it's a really nice property. It's light, it's bright, there's lots of natural light coming in through, particularly through the living area. Um, there's an open plan kitchen and living space and it's also got a little balcony off, so it's going to attract buyers that might like entertaining and things like that. It's a nice, it's a nice property. 
And that's the thing, because you're going to be the target market because it's a young professional market around exactly. there. People that live in the city want to commute in but want the lifestyle. And you want a bit of outdoor living, you want sunshine, exactly. and it just ticks the boxes. Close walk to the beach. So, yeah, all those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same thing. <laughs> At 71 square metres, that's amazing, these prices. And this is why people are so scared at mm -hmm. the moment. 71 square metres, 780,000. That's a lot of money when you think about it. Compared because again, to what it was for like. you coming from the Blue Mountain, that must sound absolutely ridiculous because you look at the square meterage out there, how can people live in such a small area? Whereas for us that live in those areas, 71 is actually reasonably large. Yes. A lot of people could live in 60 or 65. Yeah, and, and uh, again, that's something we were chatting about on the drive here, that uh, Jane would be happy just to have a veranda because she's from Adelaide and they had a backyard there. So if you can get a veranda in this suburb, you're doing you're really, happy. really well. Doing real well. And now, another really easy question for you, Charles, is will it carry on rising at 7 to 10% a year? In the future, do you think? I think it really depends on the the movement with jobs and so on. I, I've always said this. I've never known anybody to come into my office who, over the last thirty plus years of being in business, and and ask me for a wage reduction. They've always asked me for an increase. Now, don't start on Jane again on this one. But the the when I say that is that when people do that, it means that their ability to repay increases or their ability to afford thing increases and I've never known anybody who didn't have to sell their home that would sell it for less than what they bought it for. Exactly. So those two things underpin it. So purchase or pass on this property for you guys? Well, I think you'd, you'd definitely buy it. For me I'd still, that's still the size of my patio. I don't know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look certainly from my thoughts some skeptics that say properties don't grow at that rate and there's other skeptics that say the market's overheated and won't grow in the future. I believe that there's always going to be a lack of supply in these inner city areas, so I'd buy properties like this every day of the week, no matter what was being said in the papers. Anyway, now it's time to jump to Tom Panos, who's going to share with, share with us some of the other properties that are around the country. Welcome to the show, Tom. Hi, Tom Panos. How are you? Very good, Tom. I know it's a long way between us and Sydney, but we finally got there. Yes. What have you got for us this week? Okay, Chris, the first one um, is in uh, Rod Point. But I've got to tell you that uh, it has just been sold prior to its scheduled auction. Um, I got the call from Morris Toscano. It sold for two million three hundred and eighty thousand in Rod Point. Uh, first time offered on the market for sixty years, and uh, it's I go past this house all the time because there's a run there called the Bay Run, and I go past that you know when I'm doing that run or going for a walk like I did last night. And this property, obviously the buyer did not want to compete with any other buyers and Morris Toscano from Rain and Horn decided to wrap up the sale. And again, so another sign that the market, depending on where you are, is certainly uh, reasonably warm at the moment. And certainly when you've got a good view and you can see the bay from there, then uh, it's got to be pretty good. Yeah, well the other thing I was going to say is that it is also an indication when they're being sold prior to auction, uh, Chris, sometimes agents think that they may not get another buyer at the auction. So what they're doing is taking the guaranteed security of the buyer that they have. And we're seeing that increasingly happen over the last couple of weeks. Morris is he's a great real estate agent. He's been around for about 25 years in the areas. So he probably had the sense that uh, getting this thing sold was the right thing to do. Yeah, and if he's got Tom Panis running outside his house every day, he, he wanted to move on. Correct. <laughs> now, I'll gather off to uh, Tasmania now. Yeah, number two is a house in a place called Opsom Bay. Um, it's got a famous uh, vendors. One's a famous doctor, the other's a best selling author. Um, and uh, this property is going with all its uh, artwork um, intact with the property. Um, an amazing home, 45 minutes from the CBD, 30 minutes from the airport. A great lifestyle property could be used as luxury short stays. Um, it's on the market at $845,000 plus. You've got to pay um, that price or over. And I've been told from the front balcony you can definitely see the Sydney to Hobart uh, yachts as they come in. So go in and have a look at it. I was talking to um, Joe Jin and. Um, it's uh, look, you know, based on that unit that you were just showing at 750, 845 plus to watch the Sydney to Hobart sounds like a good buy. Exactly, and you get a view of Australia. You do, and it looks a bit larger than 71 square metres too. Exactly. It does. So Charles Darby might be one for this time. You can uh, tip him into it. And uh, what's number three for the night? Yeah, number three is in uh, Epping in Victoria. Uh, this one, uh, Tony Lombardi. I was talking to a stunning property 
well priced, eight to nine hundred thousand. It's in a great corridor uh, there. There's a lot of infrastructure in this part of Melbourne going on. Um, shopping centres, extensions of train lines, uh, potential rental there's around the 650 per week. The agent said to me, it's as good as home he's sold in terms of uh, uh, condition. It's a stunning home, exquisite. The floorboards, the lighting, the whole renovation of this property is absolutely exquisite. And again, another property that looks pretty good compared to the unit that we were showing there earlier on. Exactly. Us, us poor people in the eastern suburbs in these tiny units, eh, Tom? We should, we should move out to the inner west where you are and, uh, and out Correct. to the Blue Mountains with Charles. So um, you mentioned on the show before you, you thought things were cooling slightly with, uh, with your auctions, even though you're in a, a kind of a hot territory there. What are you seeing now? Uh, all I'm seeing is that we've got Easter and Anzac Day. Um, and we've got two weeks off Sky. And we've got two weeks of sky. So what we're, what we're seeing is there's a, we're taking a break and so are the actual vendors. And what I think we've seen is a lot of property come on the market, Chris, that would have come on the market later. That's giving people a bigger selection. It's taken a little bit heat out of the market. Um, I believe that it's definitely cooled a little bit. But again, I'm not indicative of the whole of the real estate market. I agree with Charles's sentiments. I think that we're seeing something that's pretty stable now. There have certainly been bits of Sydney and Melbourne that have been, you know, pretty hot. I think they're easing a little bit now that we're seeing the excess listings on the market. I look at an RP data report the other day. It showed that there is a lot of property on the market. I can tell you the revenues at News Limited have been outstanding lately, and that's got to do with the amount of property that's been on the market. Um, I think that I want to be following this after Easter and Anzac Day and just see what's going on. I think people are being a little bit more cautious. Um, but uh, uh, we just keep doing what we do, Chris, and that is keep telling people it's a great time to buy real estate. That's great. And I'm glad to hear that News Limited are doing better, so uh, they, might, they might be paying for lunch when we go out in about two weeks' time. Absolutely, Chris. And the card that, will come out. And certainly for those viewers, we've actually been pre-recording some shows, so we're still technically going to be on air over Good Friday and Anzac Day. So if you're bored, you can still tune in. All right, thanks for uh, joining us, Tom. We'll see you again next week. See you now, later. Now, after Bye, the Tom. break, we'll be solving a viewer's property investing dilemma. We'll be back soon. Keep looking. Oh, the Easter hunt. So much fun. It's going really well. I've got to look under everything. No. Could be anywhere. No. Hunt down a Maltese bunny today. A lot of people ask me who Care Super looks after. Well, actually, it's a super fun for all sorts of professionals, whether you work in an office or in front of a camera. The care part is simple. They care about your super. And better still, they get it that even with a busy life, you need to feel in control of your money. So they let you choose the level of control you want. They have strong returns and they're so easy to deal with. That's why we're with Care Super. You can find out more at whyshouldyoucare.com.au. Honestly, I knew it was time for a change, but I didn't want to spend a lot. So I got this new Windows laptop. It's a proper PC and costs much less than my old one. Runs Office, has a desktop I know, and new stuff like a touch screen and my favourite apps. So this can go now. But not that. For the life of the car you love, we'll replace it with a brand new one if yours is ever written off. Just take out GIO Platinum Car Insurance within a year of buying it new. GIO. It's a trust thing. There's show business, the construction business, the fashion, the retail, and the business of catering. There's the hospitality business, agribusiness, and countless other businesses. And then there's the can business. Who can help to keep your business moving? Combank can. Welcome back to Your Property Empire. Now, we had an email in from Paul in Brisbane, and he asked, I'm looking to put my property on the market, and I'm unsure as to what agent I should be hiring. Should I be concentrating on the agent I hire or the company that he works for? What is more important? <laughs> now, Jane, sounds like a question up your street. <laughs> what are your thoughts? 
You should never underestimate the power of a really strong brand. So uniformity and consistency are so essential when it comes to promoting yourself or a property, whether you be you know, an independent, an agent, or part of a franchisee. And I think there's so many different platforms that you can use from signboards to social media, online, um, print media, but as long as you're sending out a really clean, clear and consistent message, then um, the consumers are obviously going to look at you favourably. And it doesn't mean that you have to send out the same message every time and repeat yourself. You can have fresh content, but as long as you're on brand and making sure that you know the consumer can see that you, you've got a vision and you know what you're talking about. And, and the brand can be the person as well as the, yeah, the, course, the business as definitely. well, can't it? That's why it doesn't just have to be, as I said, a franchise. It could be just an agent or maybe an independent office. A brand is a person as well as, yeah, maybe the brand that's behind you. Now Charles, you've obviously chose, chosen Century 21 that you've been mm. in for a while yeah. and you chose a, a global brand and potentially one of the biggest global brands. Again, what made you... Potentially. Cho yeah, choose that. <laughs> oh, OK. The, <laughs> it was really simple. Uh, I, I had an independent office, a small independent office when I started in the 70s and I had to compete with brands that were already established, well established, that are still established today. And people would go into those offices. I used to say that they'd walk in the front door. I'd watch them walk in the front door and trip on the step and they'd sign a contract before they hit the floor. That's how easy it seemed to be for them. Uh, perception is an incredibly important part of the process. Uh, we always say to agents, whether they're in C21 or, or in, a, in other parts of the industry, you need to look like you know what you're talking about because if you look like you know what you're talking about, you at least get a chance to show people that you probably don't know what the hell you're talking about, but at least you've got the chance. And I, I always find that people... Uh, will call a branding, but they end up listing their home for sale with a person. So the two are really vitally important and they're, they're very, very strongly linked. Very strongly linked. Uh, Jane, I guess from your perspective of when they're putting adverts in and they're, they're running their businesses, there's certain policies and procedures that everyone within the Century 21 brand has got to follow. So there's a certain quality that people can expect if they go to Century 21 or, or wherever else. Yeah, yeah. definitely. There are a lot of great companies out there, whether they're franchised or just, uh, you know, local, uh, what do you call them, boutique brands. Boutique brands, should know the name, shouldn't <laughs> I? And, and some of them really, really do a great job in presenting themselves. And I think it's absolutely critical, but they have to follow up with what they look like at some so point. Again, so you've got to choose a good brand, but that's not a guarantee. You've got to choose the right yeah, person at absolutely. the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, so certainly some good tips there. Now, for more information on buying and selling property, you can download a copy of my book for free. Just go to yourempire.com.au. And as always, if you've got a question for us, give us a email. Send us an email, rather, at chris at yourempire.com.au. Now, we were talking earlier on the show, Charles, that um, I guess there's a lot of uncertainty about what's going on in the market. Some people think it's going through the roof and other people say oh, it's coming to an end, it's going to crash. What, what are some of your thoughts or what are some of the things that people should be thinking of? Yeah, I, I travel as you know and uh, you, you get a different view. Everybody is believing what they're seeing. Uh, which is a little bit sad. So I was talking to people the other day uh, in another capital city and they said, gee, how do you do this in Sydney? How do you buy property in Sydney? What's going on? How's it all going to work? It's not really like that. It is just, again, what you're seeing in, in the sensationalising of parts of the marketplace and how it's going. I think it's, it's going to be fine. I think we're in a nice, steady market. I really do. I mean, stock levels are changing, and there's a bit of a change in the stats this week, again, uh, in a different angle to what because most RP people data, think. Because RP data, whose stats you used for later on, they came out with some pretty big numbers, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They did. But the one I watch is, is the stock coming on the market. That's a really important one. And it's changing again. So I don't know whether we're in for this, this booming market or whether or not we're going to end up being a bit sluggish because too much stock comes on. But we'll t I guess we'll talk about that when we get to those stats. And then obviously you've got Century 21 Finance as well. So you're very close to the banks and the mortgage broking side of things. What are you guys saying there? Like, are the banks concerned at all? Uh, not concerned. I'm, I think that they're watching very closely. In New Zealand, they uh, applied a different loan value ratio to homes for first home buyers and so on uh, to pull that back Which a little bit. Which is ridiculous. Like, it's 80%. Of all people, you'd say, sure, pull back the foreigners, but don't pull back first, first home, buyers, home buyers, because for them to come up with 20%, it's impossible. It is having an impact, too, on that marketplace. It is. And I think that, that that's what banks w would probably do. Some of them got burnt very badly, if you go backwards and look at it. And so I think they're just being a little bit cautious. And they're the ones that can dominate uh, decision makers in the marketplace with... Uh, or, or putting processes in like that, same as valuers can do too. So certainly take some perspective and look for the long term. Anyway, after the break, the latest property numbers. We'll be back soon.
Statistically, the average time taken to drive to work in New South Wales is 34 minutes. The average New South Wales family spends 2.3 hours driving the kids to and from sport every week and 85.4% of all their trips are essential. Which is why, for those who need their car every day, we automatically provide unlimited days of car hire while we repair your car with GIO Platinum Car Insurance. GIO, it's a trust thing. While your rivals are chasing deals all over town, you play the ultimate advantage. You invest in corporate hospitality at Eddie Hand Stadium. You invite your business prospects, the exclusive dining, the sommelier, the bars, the live footy. They're electrified by the atmosphere, cheering from the leather seats. The roof amplifies the roar of the crowd as you win over yet another client. Eddie Hand Stadium, brilliant for business. 15 carriages on an icy slope against bitter winds. Just like I did on Everest. You have a Mars bar, son. With a Mars comes great responsibility. A lot of people ask me who Care Super looks after. Well, actually, it's a super fun for all sorts of professionals, whether you work in an office or in front of a camera. The care part is simple. They care about your super. And better still, they get it that even with a busy life, you need to feel in control of your money. So they let you choose the level of control you want. They have strong returns and they're so easy to deal with. That's why we're with Care Super. You can find out more at whyshouldyoucare.com.au. If you need a home loan, here is a great reason to contact Mortgage Choice today. Settle a loan of $150,000 or over before June 30 and you could win one of three $10,000 cash prizes. Get the right loan for you. Call 13 66 78 today. Welcome back to the show. Now it's time to take up the latest property numbers from RP Data and Century 21. Before I do though, Charles, you mentioned valuations. Yeah. Tell me a bit about that because people are concerned if the valuation is going to come in or not. Well, that's a big concern because as the prices move quickly, the valuers themselves have to adjust and a lot of valuers uh, were significantly um, injured in the last uh, process in the GFC and, and they shouldn't have been. They're, they're doing their job, going through the normal stats and now I think they might be a little bit gun shy in some respect as the prices move too quickly. And that might be something also along with the banks supplying different LVRs that could cause the market to slow a little bit uh, and or the price growth to slow a little so bit. So again, you've got to be careful about mm. the price you pay. Yeah. Well, let's look at uh, clearance rates and see what's happening. Yeah, and it's good. Uh, Tom was talking about it before and I'm glad uh, that we're all starting to agree on where it's going now. 67.7% was a clearance rate nationally. It was 58% last year, 58.6% last year uh, at this time. So there is some stability back in the market. Uh, Melbourne and Sydney were the star performers, Sydney at 75.9 and Melbourne at 66.9. So they're going along okay. They're moving along pretty well at the moment. And Adelaide still, your lovely city of Adelaide, that's moving well too. Wonderful. And homes advertised for sale, you mentioned the RP data numbers. Yeah, minus 1.24%, two weeks in a row, negative. Now whether that's coming up Easter or Anzac, people have pulled back a little bit. The amount of stock coming on the market is in the negative in New Zealand. It's in the positive for the last week, but overall in the negative for the amount of stock on the market in New Zealand. So it's changing. Now, wasn't there always a talk that there was going to be massive, massive numbers coming through soon? Yeah, we saw that for the, about eight weeks in a row. We saw numbers coming through pretty strongly, and uh, New Zealand had the same process occurring. But all of a sudden, it stopped, particularly for the Australian region. So I, I, I think we need to watch that very carefully and see how it pans out. Okay. And what's happening on the rents? Pretty steady again. Uh, Sydney's coming at 10.82, uh, Melbourne at 7.5, and, and Perth at 18.76. That level of increases we've gone through give us an average of 12.36, slightly down on last week, but still looking at that chart, you can see it's all levelling out again. And just finally on the vacancy, vacancy rates. Vacancy rates, lovely little vacancy rates. Uh, Sydney's the best one at 2.13. Uh, Melbourne at 3.66 and Perth at 3.7, so it's giving a total of 3.16. Again, you know, sitting in that range of three to four for quite a long time now. Wonderful. So, as far as you're concerned, reasonably steady for the moment. Yeah. Nothing too much. Happy to panic that about. gives young people a chance to start saving and get in there and buy. Wonderful. Charles Darby, Jane Wilkinson, thanks, thanks for joining you. us as always. Thank thanks for joining us at home, and we'll be back next week. Until then, I'm Chris Gray. Good night.
The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you.